Hello, once again. So as you may notice, you can actually see me in this video. Figured I'd give it a try, see what it's like to have my face on the screen there. If you guys think that this is something I should continue doing, let me know in the comments below. If you don't want to see my ugly mug anymore, I won't be that offended. I was going to do a green screen in the background just to kind of edit out all that. I went in my attic and apparently I have a slight mouse problem it seems so I had to order a new one and it's not here yet so hopefully that will be coming soon maybe in my next video or two so in this video we're gonna talk about a few things kind of some random stuff thrown in there too for you to learn but mostly we're gonna be focusing on hot strings and URL downloads so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the code here shall we So the first thing we're going to do and talk about is hot strings. They are a little bit different than all my other videos because I've always used hotkeys where that's just pressing a button. You know, you press F1 or you press F8, it performs an action. A hot string is essentially the same thing, but I can type out a full word or even a sentence if I want to. And when I do do that specific word or sentence, then it's going to perform the action. So in this one, I'm going to be typing the word Minecraft. So to set that up as a hot string, with a hotkey, you're just putting these dots at the end. You're also going to put them at the beginning of the word there for you, or sentence. There can be spaces in there too. It doesn't really matter. But a word's going to suffice for me. So once I type in the word Minecraft, I then need to press either the tab, space, or enter, and that's where really going to trigger. It's then going to run Minecraft for me, the launcher. It's going to sleep for 8,000 seconds. Now, that doesn't have to be that slow. I'm just kind of putting some pretty big sleeps in this video, just so you guys can visually see it a lot better in slow-mo, I guess. So I already went ahead, measured out what I need to press on the keyboard to get to the specific fields where I need to enter the text or press buttons in Minecraft. So what I got is I need to tab twice, press enter, have a large sleep in there of 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds. And this is where I'm going to be in the username field. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a fake username. And then it's going to tab four more times, press enter, sleep 3,000 seconds. And then this is where I'm going to be in my password field and enter my password and then press enter. Now, obviously, at this point, I'm going to get an error saying invalid login. Unless, for some odd reason, somebody actually has this username and password, that would be very interesting. <laughs> and then I'm going to get my mouse position with mouse get pose. And then I'm just going to save the X and Y coordinates into these two variables here. And these variables can be changed to whatever you need. They can even just be X and Y, but this is what I like to do. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to have a tooltip display just saying you were logged in at those positions that I got from up here. Sleep 4,000 seconds, just because I want that tooltip to stay open for 4 seconds. And then just tooltip by itself is how you get rid of that. If I were to forget this, that tooltip would stay up there forever in that position until I actually close out of the script, and I don't want that. So let's go ahead and try this out. Launch it. I'm going to go ahead and type in Minecraft. As you see, nothing's happened yet. Because now I need to press the... I'm going to just press the space button. It also got rid of the text for me. Because obviously I don't need that. So here it goes. Let's launch the game. It's logging into the main part. Now it's going to enter my username here in a second. Like I said, I slowed this down quite a bit. Now it's going to enter that face password, and there we go. I got that error, but if I had my real information in there, it would have logged me in. Now from here, if you want, you can even go even a few steps farther and make it automatically select the version of Minecraft you want to play, and then go ahead and launch the game. This is nice if you just kind of want to press a few buttons walk away, and when you get back, you're already logged in with the game running. Now down here, 
this is pretty much the same thing, but I just kind of want to show you a little bit of another way of using this. So pretty much all the same things. The only difference is I'm going to be opening uh, a text file and have it just auto-generate some information in there. Maybe you want to start your day out with a template being inserted into a text file. So I'm just going to do total go goals equals and then time to finish equals in notepad. Now normally with something like this, you'd probably just want to use like an F1 key or any other hotkey. But I just want to show this as an option. So I'm going to type in notepad. And that time I pressed enter instead of space just to show you that there are options. And it automatically generated that template into a text file for me. Like I said, with something like that, you're more likely to use a hotkey instead. Let's go ahead and close that down and move on to the next one. So on this one, uh, I see a lot of people always asking how to mass change file names or folder names. So I wanted to show you that. So in this one, I'm going to start off with pressing F1 as a hotkey. I'm going to assign the variable just A as 1. And then I'm going to get two input boxes right off the bat. So the first one's just going to ask me, what is the name of my show? So let's say I downloaded a bunch of TV show files, and I want to rename them all. It's going to save that variable as user input right here. Once again, it can be whatever you want. And then it wants to know how many episodes there are. That's really just going to be kind of like your file count. So here's my test folder. I got five in there, so I would answer five in that box. It's then going to click, and the reason I'm using a click here is because I want to be able to hover my mouse over the file I want. So here I'm just going to start at one, so I'd hover my mouse over one. But let's say I wanted to start at number three. I could do that. I like to do it this way just because I have more control on the starting position if you know there's other TV shows in that folder. I want to start where I want that TV show renamed. It's going to sleep for uh, one second. It's going to click again. And that's what's going to basically switch it to edit mode. And then it's going to loop based on how many files I told it were in there in the input box up above. And then it's going to assign to the clipboard the name of the show and the episode number. It's then going to, now that it's saved in the clipboard, control V, which is just paste. And then it's going to tab, which is just going to move it down to the next folder or file sleep a thousand seconds and then it's going to be uh, a plus plus which is just going to move that one up here to a two then to a three so it can you know cycle through once the loop breaks i'm going to have a tray tip so a tray tip is like a system notification if you ever have like antivirus running on your computer and you get a notice saying like scan complete or something it's the same thing but now you're in control of what it says so you put your title here. I just called it my title. The task is done and ready for next. And then that 10 there is just how many seconds that window is going to be displayed. Change it to whatever you want. 10 seems to be a pretty decent number. And then we're done. Down here I have F2 with a reload. That's just in case I want to reload it for some reason. I don't really need this. And uh, I also want to show that if you do a reload, that's just restarting the script all over basically like you closed it and relaunched it so as you see i have a message box below the reload this message box will never display because that reload hits it's starting back up here at the top of the script again so this would never actually get displayed so always be careful where you put your reloads make sure they're not really running into any other code that you want it to run before the restart so let's go ahead and try this out Press F1. There's that input box. What's the name of the show? We'll just name it the best show ever. How many are there? There's five. So I'm going to put five in there. Now before I push OK, because of the way I have my code uh, set up here, I want it to hover because I'm doing those clicks. So I'm just going to hover my mouse over the first file, because that's where I want it to start, and I'm just going to press the Enter key. All right, Enter. And it's going to go ahead and 
and name all my shows for me. Got a little bit of a hiccup there. Let's try that again. Auto hockey sometimes has this weird thing where on the first try of something, it just never works, but it will work from there on out. So let's try that again. I'm going to also resize my screen here real quick so you can actually see that tray tip pop up for you. So hold on real quick. I'll be right back. And poof, now I'm at the top of the screen. That's just so you can see a little bit better down here where that's going to pop up. So let's go ahead and try that again real quick. The best show ever. Five episodes. So it's going to rename, and then you're going to see that pop up in the bottom right corner down there. There we go. So named them. And there we go. There's that little system tray thing. And it's going to disappear after 10 seconds. So we'll wait for it to disappear just so you can see it. And there we go. So it renamed all the things. Worked pretty well there the second run. I don't know what happened on the first one. Didn't change any code or anything. Just relaunched it. That does happen. Auto hockey sometimes has some stability problems. Especially when you're using certain types of commands. That's all right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drop back to the bottom so we can go back to my normal view. And back at the bottom. Cool. So that's it for that script. Now with all my code, like I always like to say in my videos, I will post all this in the description below. If you do have any questions about what I'm showing you or want me to expand on anything, please definitely let me know in the comments. I'm glad to definitely answer anything or create even another video if it's an extensive question. Let's move on to the UR downloads. So UR download is just downloading information from a website. It's a really great way to get data that you normally would open a website and then have to like kind of dig through the website. I just kind of want to do it in the background, if you will. So URL, download to file. And this is the website that I want to download the information from. And that's just a auto hockey website here for URL download to file. It's then going to save that to my desktop, which I have here after the comma. Uh, one thing to remember when you're doing this is put a space between the website's URL and the comma because it will actually try to include that comma in your search and it can screw it up and give you a you know, like a 404 error. So just put a space there. And then where you want to save it along with what you want it to be called and what type of file. And then I'm just going to name it AHK download as a text file. Well, now I need that information. So I'm going to do a file read, save the information to a variable, which I just put output variable, and the location. So the same name. But then here, instead of putting that full path, there is a built-in variable in AHK for your desktop, and that's just a underscore desktop surrounded in per, uh, percent signs. And that will automatically get the path for you to your desktop. So I did it both ways there just so you can see it. Next, I'm going to use a nice fancy Red X, Regex Max. Match. Can't talk today. Regexes are regular expressions. They can get insanely complicated. They're very annoying to learn, I would say. I definitely plan to do a video in the future kind of going into detail with this. But basically a simple explanation of what this is doing is it's looking for the text in that file or variable is set to and then it's just going to look for whatever the next word or letter that comes after that phrase and it's going to read that from the output variable and the result is going to be stored as next word i'm just going to have a message box that says next word after is set to is and whatever it found so let's see that visually here. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Right there. Is set to 1. So I should get the answer of 1. So let's go ahead and run that. I'm going to go 
ahead, press F2. And as you saw, that was actually pretty fast. So next word after is set two is one. So I was able to pull that and that was good to go. And let me pull that over here. Here is the file that it downloaded. And as you see, it's uh, got a lot of information there. Now that was pretty fast because this website's pretty simple that I'm using. There's not a lot going on. It's just a bunch of text and there's not a whole lot of text. You know, if you're trying to go for a much larger website with a whole bunch of stuff going on that's all fancy, it might take a few extra seconds. So just bear with it. It really depends what you're doing. So the next script we got is basically the same idea, but instead of downloading a file, maybe I don't want a file on my desktop, I'm going to connect to that website, get the same information, but this time... I'm going to just save it automatically as a variable, so I'm not having to also do that file read. So I'm going to press F3 for this, for the hotkey. And then for the variable 1, we're going to do a comma object create. So this is going to have to have Internet Explorer on your computer. And then we're just doing the request here. So this line, you're not going to change at all, except for if you want to rename the variable, you can. Then down here, with that variable, it's going to actually open and get that information from that website. So I'm just using this website. This is a very simple website where all it's saying is the current version of Auto Hotkeys. It's then going to send that request. Once it gets back, it's going to wait for that response. Then it's going to get version, version response text, which is just what it received back. And display version. You can also, if you have a website that's way more complicated, it has way more text than this, kind of like this, you can do string replaces. There's a whole bunch of other stuff, but with how simple that is, I don't really need to do all the fancy stuff. I just want to display whatever the result back was without editing it. So let's try that one out. I'm going to press F3. Here we go it got the current version from that website. Like I said, if I had more text, you know, I can do stuff with the regex matches to find the information I want it. But since that's the only information on that website, I don't need that on this. I was just doing this to show you basically these three lines. And these three lines, you don't have to change anything except for your URL right here for whatever website you want. So let me know what you guys thought about this video. I'll expand on anything you want it. Ask any questions. I'm hoping that I can answer them. But last thing I always like to say, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot with keeping track of what you guys are really into, what you're watching. Hit that like button and hit that bell notification because I am putting out usually about two to three videos every week and I'm slowly starting to get more and more advanced and I even started doing some JavaScript videos that I'm slowly going to be uploading just in case because there's some videos that I've done where auto hotkeys can work with JavaScript together either in a hybrid script or through communicating with Chrome so check those out I thought you know doing some JavaScript videos might help you expand with your capabilities with auto hotkeys. All right, guys, thank you so much. See you on the next one.